That tea bag. Yeah. Is holding on to the life there. There we go. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Couches and Controllers, or Controllers and Couches, whichever way you read it. I'm Full Metal Chicken. And I'm Steph. And, or Steph Afar. And this is episode 22. And the topic for today is, well, as we all mentioned last week, if anyone has listened, uh, bioluminescence. So, yes, so that will be the uh, main, topic. Topic, main topic of today's. So, uh, what's been cracking? Well, first off, I would like to extend our thanks to two new listeners. We finally um, got a, finally. I was going to say finally conquered, but then that turns out to be very rude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a listener from Egypt, and we also have someone from Qatar. Yeah, that's cool. So, wow. I yeah. can't comprehend that people from other ends of the world that we've never seen before are listening to our voices. Yeah, so no, voices. thanks for that. So, thank you, guys. Much but appreciated. Glad you're enjoying it. So, uh, yeah, book updates? I'm, um, what do they call it? Book two in the Tomi Adeyemi, who wrote, like, the biggest um, young adult, new adult book last year, Children of Blood and Bone. Her sequel, which has been delayed four times, technically came out today, but I'm getting it tomorrow because they didn't text me that it came in until, like, ten minutes before the store closed today. So I'm re-reading slash re-listening to book one at the moment. So that way by tomorrow... When I go in and get the book, I'm caught up and yeah, recapped. Excellent. And I love the book, and that's why I um, pre-ordered the, se- the sequel, I guess you could say. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've um, been reading Apocalypse Cow. That's yeah. cool. So, uh, it's by Michael Logan. Yeah. And um, so, long story short... It's a uh, zombie plague. No, cows. But that, no news. <laughs> you know, starts with animals in Britain. And I figured it was funny because something we mentioned, like, about... Did we... I think in the past we mentioned foot and mouth disease. Yeah. And, like, bovine and And we're eventually going to go through, like, all of the infectious outbreaks and stuff like that and do series as... Dumb question. Is that supposed to... I don't want to use the word parody, but is that supposed to parody um, Krutzfeld Jakob? Uh, sort of. It, Except it's supposed to be like rabies... Not like rabies, but a plague takes over. So it's about a, a journalist called zombies. Logan. And... Um, oh, no, sorry. No, the, the author is Logan. But yeah. anyways, the, the there's a character... I'm not going to... Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to spoil it. But essentially... This character, so the our protagonist is a survivor of a, you know, zombie cow rampage. So wow. that's why I thought it was absolutely hilarious. And if you actually look at the front, um, the the actual title says "Apocalypse Cow." Forget the cud, they want blood. So uh, that's actually on the cover, and it's hilarious. And she's got a picture of this really, really angry cow. So I thought that was hilarious. So that's what is it? A Simpsons episode. Yeah. Called Apocalypse Cow, season yeah. 19, episode 17. Yeah, so uh, it, it's rather funny, so I figured. But massive fan of Terry Pratchett, so anything that's kind of warped and hilarious. For anyone interested, it's got a 3.6 star rating on Goodreads, and honestly, unless someone's paying for reviews, uh, that's about as good as it gets. Yeah, but if you want to see something that's really funny, watch a movie called Black Sheep. I send you memes from that all the time. <laughs> I've never watched the movie. Funny. You have. Yes, but I it have is you. hilarious. So... Uh, yeah, so... Um, zombie people eating sheep. Yeah, zombie sheep. So, uh, zombie cows. Uh, so, I've been reading that, but also I was reading a bit more of the uh, Seven Dangerous Wonders. Well, yeah, Seven Dangerous Wonders series yeah, by so Matt Riley. i got to finish got that. got one book left. I actually got the audio book for that. You probably get the emails because yeah. it's your account. But I got it uh, today, yep. I think. So, I'll listen to that this weekend. And then I'm all caught up on the series. And I've also been listening to... Isaac Asimov's um, do androids oh do electric uh, do android uh, yeah <laughs> uh, yeah not enough caffeine today do um, yeah do androids dream of electric sheep so um, yeah so that was pretty funny but gaming wise I've just been punching out Call of Modern Duty Warfare. Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, but also World of Tanks. I got back into World of Tanks. So, probably. And you got your anniversary tank too. Yeah, I did. It was a uh, Super Hellcat. So, uh, Tank Destroyer. 
Um, so if anyone is interested in tanks, I definitely recommend you check out World of Tanks. It's uh, yeah, nice RTS. Um, I've been playing it for years, so well, evidently that's why you got the other version. <laughs> um, so essentially, uh, yeah, the Super Hellcat was uh, well, also known as the M18 Hellcat, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, American tank destroyer from World War Two. Uh, yeah, apparently um, it was the fastest US tank on the road. Is it, when you say road, do you mean like paved road or do you mean Any like road. Or As in like just, moving. yeah, just and um, it basically had a higher kill to loss ratio than you know, any other tank or tank destroyer because it's fast. Well, if it's fast, I can imagine by the time someone locks for loads, you're gone. Yeah. Leaving them in your dust. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to plank. Uh, plank. plank. Yep, plank. <sighs> Sorry. Um, plug not that he needs a plug from us but uh dr phil actually has a true crime podcast and he's subsequently like puts it in season so he talks about one case for like five episodes um it's called mystery and murder and it is worth a listen he do- he's very unbiased and because i come from like a psychological kind of scientific uni training I maybe appreciate it a bit more but if you're a fan of Dr. Phil I'm not saying that everything Dr. Phil does is great um, or is right <laughs> but yeah would like 9 out of 10 recommend that podcast yep. so I marathoned in like what day and a half and caught up so it was really good in my personal opinion yeah so, and yeah. Um, yeah Oh, also we've been watching The Mandalorian yes uh, episode 5 came yes. out this week just gone uh, we've filmed this about five or six days in advance, so by the time this goes out, episode six will be up, and we will have watched that. But honestly, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I know you're like one of the big OG Star Wars fans, but at this point, I'm just here for Baby Yoda. Baby, baby yeah. Yoda. Because the way I see it baby, now, baby Yoda. and we could do a whole podcast on this, but the thing is with Star Wars, it's split. In, it is definitely split into two factions. And it's a case of this is why there's arguments even at, at trivia nights. We've been to a few trivia nights and it's got into arguments, like real, real big arguments. And a lot of the time it's literally gone with the new canon. So um, from all for all those listeners out there, I'm original canon. Not So everything now, anything past A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, for me, that is... The Holy Trilogy, that is old canon. So all the books and comics that stem from that, that is canon for me. Um, and as much as, you know, I appreciate that there's all these new Star Wars movies coming coming out and everything, obviously, you know, they've got to do it for new generations. I get that completely. However, my brain is kind of concrete set in the old ways. So everything now is extended features. So there are some things that are happening that we sort of look at and go, what the... It is very questionable, and I'm not going to talk about it now. It's just a, a mention, but when we wanted to, you know, sort of delve more into The Mandalorian, we will, and I'll bring some of that up. But um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next few episodes. So, um, What was the error? Like, I lost track in this thing, um, series, when they used parsec as a measurement of time yeah instead of distance yeah but in this parsec um and i can't remember which specific episode it was but i did rewind it like we rewind wound it and um played it again and they referenced like a specific amount of parsecs as time yeah instead of it being the distance um like unit i guess you could say like yeah. scale and at that point i was just kind of like i like i'm not going to be here like, i came on the star wars train when episode one two and three were out right so at that point it had already peaked for lack of a better term um you've started like we've just started now that disney plus is out yeah we're slowly making my way through the original trilogy the holy trilogy if as it were um, and there's so many like continuation errors. But I'm not going to tear it apart because, to, you know, it it's a big thing. It's a big pop culture thing, and it's, I'm not going to sit there. I do it for shits and giggles with you. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like you, like if we were to sit down and watch all five Twilight movies, you would 
you know, talk shit like I would talk shit. But you're not going to be disrespectful of it. Yeah. I understand that there's so much they could make from it. I think they're just being... Yeah. Yeah. Well, essentially, a parsec is a unit of distance yeah. equal to 3.26 light, light years. Or so, essentially, one unit on the coordinate scale corresponds to 15 parsecs. So, that's also funny when we had an argument with that. And, and, the, and yeah. then the guy was like, oh, no, it's a unit of measure of time because it's got the word sec in it. And it's like, no, it's distance. Distance, yeah. And so, we lost yeah, the we trivia lost because night because... <laughs> yeah. So some really funny things. I would have gotten like the... the, the a jug of lemonade. The prize was like for a jug of beer, but I'm not, not, I don't drink. So I was going to ask him to trade for some lemonade. And we lost by one point. Because yeah. they didn't believe me that it was indeed. Yeah, so that was a yeah. little bit, you know. Oh, well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we've been watching The, the Mandalorian. Um, and also, we've been going through Star Wars again. Yeah. We're prepping for... The new movie coming out. Yeah, which out comes out next, next week. week. Oh, nine days? Yeah. So many days? So, like but we can talk about that in the next podcast because yeah. that's going to be the big heat. So, uh, yes, yeah, should probably pre order tickets to be honest. Yeah, probably should. Would you prefer a morning, like, uh, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking session? going morning. So, yeah. I'll have to have a look. Do you want an opening day? No, nah, it's going to be flat out. But if we get tickets, it doesn't matter. No, that'd be good because that's when all the crazy people and show cause up. the thing is, you'll have work, and I don't want people to spoil it for you. So, yeah. even if it's just one day where we wake up and relatively early and just go, because kids yeah. will be at school, yeah, at that point, we hope, Cause, yeah, because. I think school fit. What time? That just where in Victoria if that doesn't uh, school holidays. So yeah, so I'm half tempted to actually try and order in a real lightsaber. So people who twenty first of so they finish the day after it comes out. I think because it comes out on the Thursday. Is it this Thursday? I thought it was next Thursday. Next Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, kids finish next Friday, being um, the twentieth of December. Cool. So not this coming, but the one after. Yeah. So uh, Baby Yoda, there you go. Baby, Baby Yoda, Yoda and Yoda. Star Wars. Now, uh, completely uh, separate to Star Wars. Yes. Beverages. Um, what are you the... drinking first off for your tea? Uh, today you I'm like, I'm backing off on the caffeine. Ca- the caffeine. So I'm going for some uh, lemon and ginger. Um, I'm cranking that out. And yeah, some twining sleepy time. No, it's twining for sleep. Uh, chamomile and honey. So, yeah, busting yeah. that out, see what happens. But uh, um, beverage-wise... We thought we'd go for something a little bit festive. Yeah, festive. Not festive, festive. <laughs> um, saying, which holiday beverage matches your personality? And if you want to do this quiz with us, as always, the link will be in the episode notes. Yeah. Or description, whatever whatever app you use. Yep. Um, so question one. What's your favourite part about the holiday season? A, spending time with loved ones. B, fun- wearing funky sweaters. C, the parties. Or D, the snow. Uh, spending time with loved ones. Spending time with loved ones. Well, I've never seen snow. So I'm going to go for snow. Actually, I would like to refute that statement. Because your mum tells me the story of how it snowed where you guys were. You're from like, I'm not going to say which town. Because that's triangulating your position and your real identity. Yeah. <laughs> but um, apparently you guys had a white Christmas. Oh uh, yeah, it was like, more like just frost. Like No, the... she says it snowed. Mm, oh, snow it is, but yeah, okay then. So uh, when should stores start playing Christmas music? Never. A week after Thanksgiving, December 1st, a week before Christmas. I reckon, you know how there's Black Friday? Yep. And then there's Saturday. And then I think that Black Friday, like after Black Friday is the day. Um, but personally, we, except for the issue, we've always done everything December 1st. So I'm going to go December 1st. I'm thinking I'm going to err on never because yeah. I'm fed up. I'm f- <laughs> I knew you were going I'm there. fed up with Mariah Carey. I really am. How, how, you know what? Just while we're here, how much does she make in royalties? Royalties or in, Every in year, ice just, products? No. It would have to be... At li- like, how much Beskar would she get for her radio, radio? you know? Well, it's like one of the... When you type in how much does, it comes up. Apparently, she's... Es- oh, I don't know. Yeah. No, just... If, if, Between 1994 and 2013, so for 20 years, she made 50, ma- 50 million bucks in royalties. So twenty years divided by fifty, 
that's almost that's, that's over a mil, or a little over a million every year. Yeah. yeah. So okay. that's a lot. Sorry. Anyways, so do you prefer to give or receive presents? Uh, neither, both. Receive, give, 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 give. I'm both. Yeah. That's yeah. Fair enough. Okay. I feel really weird when people give me presents. Like I feel like no matter what I do, I can't express how grateful I am. And I don't like it when people look at me. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Now, the next one is choose the cutest holiday animal. Now, they haven't really given words. It's more let's describe them to you. So there's, so there's like this baby labradoodle pup with a Christmas Santa hat, Santa hat yeah. right? Then there's like a what do they call them? It's not a tortoiseshell. That's not a tortoiseshell baby. That's uh, a, like a not a calico, but it's like a baby, baby Maine Coon before it gets its fluff. Yeah. So More like a baby rag dog crossed with a Maine Coon. Then you've got a Russian blue in some tinsel. Where it looks like it's seen some shit. Yeah. Some, um... And then it's a baby... Uh, a, if you hold your mouse on the dog, it's a French bulldog puppy in wearing a Santa hat. Yeah. Short, fur, grey cat. <laughs> it's a blue Russian. And I'm then gonna go for the pup woman long. carrying kitten. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the first one, which is the long coated white puppy wearing Santa hat. I'm going the uh, destructive kitty in the tinsel. Of course, you would. All right, hit me with what you got. Okay, so I've got eggnog. Oh, how accurate! You're an acquired taste. While some people may not quite get you, the ones who do love you, you're bold, full of flavour, and great to have around. Yeah, yeah fam, high five. Yeah, yeah. Drink quietly for the headset. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm an eggnog. <laughs> Uh, which is funny because you 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 stock up yeah, I do. on eggnog. I even make my own. Um, so I'm a hot chocolate. My sweet personality is always comforting to those around me, and my kindness makes people feel warm inside. Yeah. Which is like the only hot drink I drink, unless it's a cup of soup, which is all for the salinity. Did you know that the uh, first use of the word nog was in 1693? Um, however. It may also stem from noggin, which is a Middle English term Fed. for a carved wooden mug, which is small, oh. a small carved wooden mug uh, that was used to serve alcohol. However, a British drink was also called an egg flip um, because they did a thing called flipping or rapidly pouring the mixture between two pitches to mix it. There you oh. go, eggnog. Congrats. There you go. Everyone's learned something. I didn't know that. Thanks for that. No worries. All right, you're ready to hit up the weekly news wrap up. Yeah, hit it. Here we go. I tried Drum to Drum roll, take, please. I tried to take make some stories that apparently all didn't save and sync. So just give me two. The first few are there. I'll yeah, yeah. figure out the others. I don't know why they didn't work. Um, because on my end it says that they're there. Yes. So oh, crap. Back this to crap. just quickly while you're doing that, we'll go back to Mariah Carey and the fact that everyone keeps saying Mar Mariah Carey is thawing out. If Mariah Carey was taken to Bespin and then, you know, carbon freeze treated, she would not thaw out, which would be brilliant. I'll just read those two stories that apparently didn't sync properly on yeah. my phone, if that's all right with you. Yep. I'm so sorry. I don't know you why it's be. saying it's working offline when I'm literally connected to two types of internet. <sighs> all right. So the first story I wanted to talk about today is something that I saw twending on Twitter. Twending on Twitter, yep, yep. And this is... So, uh, you know how we watched Frozen the other day? And yes. Olaf's adventure, yes. Frozen Adventure, came on? Yes. Apparently there was this one scene where he's walking through... Um, the Walking through, I think, a village or some shit, like a village fair, and he gets a measuring tape from one of the stall owners... And he finds out that he's five foot four inches. Yeah. And then people bloody panicked because, uh, well, I'll, I first off would like, because people were panicking and people were making so many memes and therefore trying to figure out if Olaf is indeed five foot four inches, how tall are the rest? Like, even though they're supposed to be Scandinavians, how bloody tall is this person supposed to be, right? Yeah. Oh, it just seems fantastic. Um, so... How tall is Elsa and everyone else? Even though they're Scandinavian, like how tall? So first off, I would like to extend my gratitude to Jessica Mason from the Mary Sue because she um, wrote this article. And she said, well, I can still find the Google answer that is cited above being the... If you type in Olaf's height in Google, it comes up with that. Um, the actual page it links to says nothing about Olaf's height. Further, I've rewatched Olaf's Frozen Adventure, where this mythical scene is supposed to happen, and the scene doesn't exist. 
Uh, she says that maybe it's like if it's written down in a storybook, like a, a book that Disney has published, maybe it's referenced there. But like she couldn't find it in the movie short yeah. that people were talking about. And so if indeed that measurement is real and Olaf is really five foot four, uh, they reasoned that Elsa is approximately 11 foot 12 inches or 393.7 centimetres. And then Twitter went off and some people, one person, and then everyone was just reposting it from there saying, to put this into perspective, Thanos from the Marvel Cinematic Universe compared to Elsa is a measly 242 centimetres, right? And then Elsa would have to be 393.7 centimetres. So... My question is, why was an Elsa cast as Captain Marvel? Yeah, that is a good point. Or maybe, maybe they will. They should be in the <laughs> X Men. <laughs> well, they stuffed up Dark Phoenix. So oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. From them. <laughs> so bad. All right. So this is another story that I saw on the Tweet Tweet. Um, it's going to be a bit of a journey, but I promise you, it's going to be worth it. So this is oh, also just yes, quickly sorry, sorry. interrupt during that movie. There was one scene where I said that you know oh that reminds me of Firefly. Dark Phoenix. No 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 no. Frozen. Frozen. Where Olaf uh, gets impaled on the ice. Oh god. Spoiler alert. Yeah, it's <laughs> not ruin it for kids and. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> it's like let's just say uh, that particular character uh, Olaf got put through the wash. I mean what. <laughs> this is <laughs> actually no, we're not a family channel. It's okay, we're an explicit. Yep. I marked us as explicit, so we're all right. We're yep. an adult channel for adults. Yeah. Um. So there's this popular British vlogger, and her name is Al Darby, and she was called out by the owner and manager of the Char- uh, sorry, I think it's called the Charleville Lodge Hotel in Dublin, Ireland, and he also owns the neighbouring White Moose Cafe, right? So I don't know if it's like together. You know how you might have a bed and breakfast kind of hotel and. Um, like how hotels you stay at have restaurants and stuff embedded with them and I believe that cafe is called the White Moose Cafe and so on their Facebook page they posted um, a screenshot of an email that they received and it's cropped into two parts and the first part says hi there I hope this email finds you well I'm emailing in regards to a possible collaboration on a social me- on social media my name is and then he's kind of like um, blacked it out redacted it because you know with an iPhone how you take a screenshot and you can use a highlighting tool and a pencil tool? Yeah. He's used the highlighting tool, but he's toned it black yeah. to scrub out her name and her where she's linked, her like her um, um. YouTube channel. But he hasn't done it in such a way where it's... If you boost your iPhone brightness, yeah. you can still read through it. It's still yeah. transparent. So it's opaque. Yeah, capacity. Yeah. yeah, so you can still identify her. And so the email goes on saying, I work as a social media influencer, many lifestyle, beauty, and travel based. At the time she sent the email, she said, I have over 87,000 YouTube subscribers. And then she's put her email, sorry, her YouTube link, as well as 76,000 Instagram followers. And then she's put the number that she had there at the time she emailed him. And then the email continues, My partner and I are planning to come to Dublin for an early Valentine's Day weekend from February 8th to 12th to explore the area. As I was searching for places to stay, I came across your stunning hotel and would love to feature you in my YouTube videos slash dedicated Instagram stories slash posts to bring traffic to your hotel and recommend others to book up in return for free accommodation. Last year, I worked with Universal Orlando in Florida and it's been amazing for them. Let me know if this is something you'd be interested in doing. I'm looking forward to hearing from you, exclamation mark, smiling emoji. <laughs> and then in a separate post, the owner slash manager posted a statement saying, so he's obviously emailed her, if that makes sense, like in his response, email, his screenshot, his response to her. And I could only get to, like I only wanted to talk about two, but otherwise it's like a whole essay. But the main two parts I wanted to focus on was the first one being, if I let you stay here in return for a feature in your video, who is going to pay for the staff who look after you? 
Who's going to pay for the housekeepers who clean your room, the waiters who serve you breakfast, the receptionist who checks you in, who's going to pay for the light and heat you use during your stay, the laundering of your bed sheets, the water rates. Maybe I should tell my staff that they will be featured in your video in lieu of receiving payment for work carried out while you're in residence. Lucky for us, we too have a significant social media following. And at the time he sent the email, they had 186 thousand followers on their two facebook pages mm. and approximately 80k on their snapchat snapchat sorry 32k on instagram and 12k on their twitter and then he goes but jesus christ i would never in a million years ask anyone for anything for free i also blog a bit and then he also put his like blog address which as far as i'm aware is another way of saying i write stuff on the internet the above stats do not make me any better than anyone else or afford me the right to not pay for something someone else has to pay for. In future, I'd advise you to pay to offer your to pay your way like everyone else. And if the hotel in question believes your coverage will help them, maybe they'll give you a complimentary upgrade to a suite. This would show more self-respect on your part and let's face it, would be less embarrassing for you. Uh, best regards, Paul Stevenson, but the lodge you need uh, sorry the lodge email for the hotel ps the answer is no all right so i went to her social blade for what was current when i was prepping for this on uh two date being the 8th of december uh in the afternoon and at that point in time she had over three hundred and twenty-five thousand subs on um her social blade sorry on her youtube but that's what her social blade reported and she equated to just over 41 million views when i looked and right now on her channel, she's in the thick of Vlogmas. She runs a very fitness-focused, lifestyle-based, holiday-ish vlogging kind of thing, just looking at her. I, ha I haven't subscribed to her, but I've got it open in a separate tab, if that makes sense. So I want to see what she's about and what she's kind of like as a person. Um, but it's not like they're poor, because she and her partner announced that they bought their dream house two weeks ago on a video. Yeah. Um, so they're not really struggling. And let me say, it's a massive place. Um, so this is where I kind of have a problem and it kind of goes two ways for social media, especially for like YouTube and Instagram being the two primary driving forces because yeah. it's pictures. You can actually see something as opposed to Twitter where it's all just blasting words. Yeah. Uh, it's saturated by whether you want to call them influencers or not being paid to promote products, places, hotels, um, whether it be whatever products, anything or to go on a holiday for free or compensatory or whatever. But if this was, let's just talk about it in terms of another big British YouTuber being Zoella. We used to watch her stuff from her Vlogmas years ago. She had two hamsters back in the day in the black pug, remember? Yeah. And she, you asked me who she was and she was in the YouTube wrap up video yeah. we were watching and you're like, oh, who is she? She's not Marcia. When we were watching Mr. Gigi's yeah. discussion video and I said, oh, that's Zoella. Yeah, that was her. And at the time, I don't know if she still is, but she was the most subscribed British YouTuber. And I want to keep it relative because Al is also a British YouTuber. If it was Zoella who went to, or someone else of Zoella's, Zoella's, I don't want to say count, like subscriber count or pull, right? Influencer status. If it was her or her team reaching out to that hotel, would they have treated her the exact same way? I don't think so. If the, she's reaching out to 20 plus million people across all of her social medias, would they have treated her the same way? Right? And yes, I I completely agree it's scummy to try and get a free stay in exchange for what she considers promotion. And the manager had every right to decline her collaboration. But I can tell, like, how much has her channel grown? And how much more traction does his hotel and cafe have? since this has been put out there and if you look at a sub count now well what i screenshotted for you and described compared to what she sent in her initial email like look how much yeah it's you know what i mean it's all just traction and like you've i haven't been but you've been in that situation where people are like because you have a builders channel like for lego and stuff yeah and people have offered for you to buy what products you want and then they would refund you the money so essentially you get the product for free, if yeah. that makes sense. And all you had to do was do your like two, three hour video yeah. set. Because you and would then, do an unboxing, you would do a build, and then you'd do a speed build. And yeah. all of that has a review. And then the problem though that I came into was one, because then, well, 
if you go to my channel and you read the disclaimer and everything, there's Lego, there's official Lego, and then there's knockoff Lego. So as much as I'm reviewing knockoff Lego, it's purely a, it's just a review of this is what a build looks like, yeah. speed build, and that's what it is. And How you're not it, getting any money no, from No, I'm not making any money from it. It's just a hobby. Now, the thing is, I'm not really comfortable with having one of these companies in China coming to me and saying, well, can you, you know, yeah. push this on everyone else? That's not my intention. My intention is just to go, well, okay. I'm building something. This is what it looks like. Now people know this is the difference between an official Lego item and a non. It's that's the comparison. It's just it's supposed it's just trying to be a review. Yeah. You can you can choose whatever you want to do at the end, but I'm not trying to You're not saying you must buy this, use my no. code, do this. And I really respect people like I know they have their own bullshit that comes with them, but like you know Tati? Yeah. And Jeffree Star and um, Simply Now Logical like they don't get paid for reviews people approach them and they say look yeah. I would like to remain unbiased mm -hmm. if I have a code um, I will only promote companies if they give me like affiliate codes if I actually use and yeah. love said product without the company sending them to me yeah and all this was was just me going, ah, oh, this looks interesting. I'm going to investigate it and show what it looks like. At the end of the day, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but I, I understand these like the amount of traction these people these are people are getting. Essentially, they are getting traction. I don't get traction. At the end of the day, funnily enough, well, they're two different. Don't kinds put of yourself traction. down. Oh no, but they're two diff They're completely different realms. Completely different. You fields. know what I mean? But the numbers you pull for what you do don't. Put yourself down. Oh, no. You get fat, especially when you were posting something because you, Full Metal Mike, when you do your videos, you will do your unboxing so yeah. what it looks like when it's shipped to you, whether yeah. it be Lego, whatever company it is that you purchase with your own money. Then you will do a, um, a full unpacking yeah. build and commentary as you build yep. and then your review at the end. And then you have a separate speed build video. So if people just want the build at the end yeah. and the review at the end and you put your timestamps and everything, that's what you do. Yeah. And so you will put three videos a week. Sometimes, yeah. In thick of it when you had time yeah. and all that kind of thing. And you were pulling... Dude, you had in two weeks what it took me five years to build on my channel. And then what I found is this is the other problem as to why I haven't been doing it for a while, which, mind you... You're getting back into this I'm week. getting back into this week. The thing is, you see the professional channels, they have the setup to actually do the but constant... But you will get that eventually. Oh, yeah. You know and what I mean? You at the moment, everyone has to start somewhere. True. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a very little fish in a yeah. very, very big pond, and I enjoy it. But that's see, that's the thing. You do it for you started it as a hobby. You started it for fun. The numbers never meant anything yeah. to you. You were kind of like, hey, I love Leo. I build it. I might as well film myself building it. You and know, so other people can get enjoyment out of it. Yeah, it's it's just a hobby. That that's it. And at the end of the day, and people actually like interact with you. And see, that's a good thing because at the end of the day, I'm not trying to rip anyone off. At the end of the day, there is, the, the funny thing is. And what I like about you is you never link where you got the product exactly. from it's because not about you're that. never promoting one specific, unless it's a Lego, like authentic. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You link to the Lego. Lego website. Yeah, that's where it goes. Um, but you never like actually promote, say that it is it was Leopard or whatever, the how, Star Winners. Yeah, or You Mega never Blocks actually or... promoted their link. And people would say to you, oh, give me the link you purchased from. And you'd say, look, I won't give you the link per se, but I can, these are the search terms I used yeah, to that's get it. it. That's all you need because at the end of the day, it's this is what's out there. It gives people an idea of what is out there. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm not here to fleece people. At the end not of the day, sure. if people want to listen to us, they listen to us. We're not going to force them to listen to us. And at the end of the day, we're not going to do something like what they have done. Not Ellie Darby, sure. what she has done is essentially product placement and done it in a way that has generated traction. Essentially... We had a, well, I had a similar one, what, well, not, sorry, I won't say similar. I had something happen where my account got fragged in the sense that 
someone played funny buggers yeah. and shut my channel down for two months because supposedly I was generating revenue because of advertisements. Now, what I actually found out, and I did some research, and what people can actually do on the smaller channels is what they do is yeah. they can keep fragging your advertisements yeah. and it makes it look as though you're doing it because it's unrealistic. Yeah. So someone fragged my account for two months. And you couldn't access... He's, you couldn't access even to watch. I couldn't Someone do anything. Is, Shut down for two months. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, and we know who this guy, and this guy was so stupid because you got the email. Yeah. Because he left a comment before he did it, and he told you exactly what he was going to do. Exactly. And so the email was sent because you know how when someone writes a YouTube, if yeah. if you don't have a YouTube channel, um, basically if anyone posts on your video or whatever in a comment or private, me- you used to be able to private message someone through YouTube. So this asshole. Like, I get that because not everyone's going to like the content you put out. True. And that's fair enough, yeah. right? bell curve. So this guy posted on your video. Yeah. And then he sent you what used to be a private messenger service yeah. through so your I got YouTube PM'd. channel. And he told you exactly what he was doing. And this fucking dickhead. And we're not going to say who this no. person is because they don't get any traction at all no, at the end of the day. They, they actually shut their channel down. Yeah, not because channel. you did anything. They just happened yeah, to cancel. This person... Probably someone else reported them, Absolutely. to be honest. Because at the end of the day... It's you trying to get into a community of people who there there are people who I've talked to who yeah. are hardcore official Lego builders. Now yeah. they've PM'd me. And they've said, they've spoken to up. me. This is fantastic. Keep going because yeah. at the end of the day, I'm not one of the ones that are pushing it. I'm just yeah. saying this is what's going on. Yeah. And I completely I'm not trying to clickbait. I'm not trying to oh, no, drive track like drive. What traction. you say is. You tell it like it is. And so this moron, Has he emailed you, he PM'd you through what you, when you used to yeah. be able to, you know, privately email someone through your YouTube. <laughs> and this fucking idiot, yeah. his real name came, came up. up. Yeah. And so we found out where this kid went to school. I found his mother. And this kid happened to be, what, 15, 16 15, years old? 15, 16. So yeah. I sent, because I'm that petty bitch, I sent his mother on her Facebook page because his mother was listed in the email, yeah. sorry, in his profile, like, family members. Because no one puts privacy settings on. No. And I sent her a private message, and I sent her all the screenshots of everything, and she, like, schooled her son. <laughs> and this reminds me of that guy when, I'm not saying it's great, but I have a, like, really shitty booktube. Ch- I used to, up until a year ago, where I used to, like, review books and talk about books and stuff again. Which you should I haven't get had back time. Into, I'll get yeah. back into it eventually. And I reviewed. It was part of a laugh, and also just because at the time, not to say I love the series, but I liked it. And it was a Fifty Shades book four. Yeah, that I remember that. You got five. slammed yeah. hard. And but also, book too. Book four came out, and I shit my pants, and I got so much hate for it. You did. And then when book five came out, which was book two told from Christian's perspective, so book four is part one told from his perspective. Book four, book five is part two told from his perspective. And book two came out, and I was like, you know what? And I actually said in the video, I'm not taking any shit this year. If you talk shit to me or to anyone else who's commenting on my video who wants to actually have a stupid discussion. Like, we're actually breaking it down, talking about yeah. how shit it was. Yeah. And continue with errors and everything like that. And I said in the video, if you're going to talk shit, I will block you and I will report you. Yeah. And then this dumb idiot used his uni email. Sorry. So he had a YouTube channel, but it was registered to his uni email. Yeah. And he went off and he tore me apart and he called me some really fucking hardcore shit. I pissed myself laughing. I screenshot his comment. I reported him to YouTube. YouTube shut him down and said, look, you know, would you like us to proceed this further? And I thought, you know what? No. So I went to, um, I found him because he had his name. I emailed everyone in his school, literally the deans. The, um, what else do they call them? The chancellors. It, yeah. The, the email chain was 400 people long. Because he really... He went re- off. He went and off. I was like... If that's it was extremely gonna... defamatory. Yeah. There's crossing the line and then there's crossing a line, painting another line and then crossing that. It's... It, and I had, I had time. And you had to do what you did because... <laughs> It, he didn't just do it to you. He actually went And he on was going to other people. And had, that's like, what pissed pages, me off. Yeah. Like to actual people who had no idea who I was. They had no right to yeah. be... Her- he had no right to harass them thinking they had anything to do with me. I'm sorry, I've just seen a spider above your head. 
Um, and then, please excuse me, I'll just get a tissue. So he had no right to go to them and think that they had anything to do with me and put them down because I wanted to read some stupid fucking shit for four hours in one afternoon. Yeah. And then make a fucking 30 minute video about how shit I actually thought it was. And he went off with people and I've gone, I don't care. Yeah. And then so the Chancellor got back to me and said, we're launching an investigation. And then they sent me something back. And to be honest, it's still sitting in my inbox. I never, like, they got rid of him but, or whatever. But you know the funny thing? This is the funny thing. And going back to, you know, looking at Social Blade and seeing what Ellie Darby has done. Yeah. And the way people have generated their own traction. Um we're not big enough to generate traction like that. At the end of the day, we just enjoy doing this. Yeah. So it's just a hobby. It's a hobby. So at the end of the day, while these people would have their channels shut down and that would directly impact their income, that could shut yeah, down lots of sure. things. At the end of the day, we're just doing this as shits and giggles. This is a hobby. But that's what but YouTube mark my was words to be. And mark your words, there are people out there who have crossed that line and haven't realized that we're not kids. We we're are adults. trying to keep, you know, people entertained. This is entertainment. We do this because we enjoy it. We do this Ultimately, to have a laugh. It's a hobby. It's a for hobby. Us. So at the end of the day, for the certain few that if work we end in up that make up, if we end up making the, money, whether it be tomorrow, next year, five or ten years from now, or we decide to quit next week, yeah. it was fun while we did it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's all that matters. And see, the thing about building blocks. Building blocks does take money to do. Talking, talking doesn't. About kits, yeah. So yeah. in that sense, sure. And time, it does take a lot of time. I mean, at the end of the day, to You're go about say editing something that may be in upwards of six or seven hours long, depending minimum. on the kit that yeah. you have. And some some kits. There's one kit that I'm looking to start soon. It's about fifteen and a half thousand pieces. And now, that, yeah. It comes down to me doing. If, once you start breaking down the editing for stop motion, if because stop motion take you know frame by frame, I, I frame by frame it. So that is a time consuming. A time consuming, and there are you know I get a lot of feedback, which I try and act on and incorporate it because at the end of the day, you the the viewer, you the the listener may have a better idea. May have a better idea than us of uh, naturally, and we appreciate that. So we want engagement with our criticism, audience. You know? Exactly constructive crit criticism because at the end of the day, I don't care if someone calls me you know. X, Y, Z. It doesn't bother me at all. Really don't care. At the end of the day, however, if someone is going to go and defame people... Whether you know, it be us or other people. Other people. No, that's 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 not acceptable. If, if they're doing that to generate their own kind of traction for their own accounts and then posting things they've sent us or you, the audience, then that is crossing the line. That is yeah. not acceptable. And kids, do yourself a favour. I don't care how safe you think you are. Use an email that, yes, you have to plug in your actual personal phone number, but don't use your actual real name no, as don't. your email address because someone can do anything. Someone can post something stupid about you and anyone can take any freaking random photo of you that you have no idea about and you should never have to deal with that to begin no. with. And, and anyone can do anything with a picture of you or your name or, you know, someone can hack your account and post easily. something. And catfish, you know, yeah. catfishing. Now, in Australia, catfishing isn't a massive thing, but in America, for it's instance... It's massive. It's massive. So, um, you know, if... like, and There's also a topic. If uh, anyone would like us to discuss um, catfishing... And like Pros baiting and, and yeah, to yeah. you know, when it's, let us know. Feel free to shoot us a PM. Um, you know, let us know. I don't. I haven't experienced it too much of myself. I have had like friends or the scam emails, baits and fish mm. stuff. I get a lot of that, but I feel like I think a lot of it now primarily is like I don't chat to people online unless I know the person. Yeah. Well, probably you know we do get the occasional person ringing up saying that we know we own the tax. No oh, department. Uh, IRS oh, so that, funny know. though. If there was that one person who did ring us up and say that you know we owed X and blah 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 from uh, the tax department, thanks because you know we had something that the tax department did actually owe us. So thank you very much for that because we ended up contacting the ATO and we found out that the, the, they the owed ATO you a lot owed of money. us. So thank <laughs> you for that. They did in fact owe us money, but it wasn't you. Um, so but cheers. But cheers. Thanks. Um, right, I better get this one. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. I. <laughs> now. So yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no. Back to Ellie Darby and I. What's your take on it? I think it's bullshit. 
But if, honestly, if the if the place had asked her and contacted her, fair enough. Like, yes, she had a right to... Here's what she should have done. She should have said, look, I have a YouTube channel. This is me. Is it okay if I film on your premises? Yeah. And if she's a big enough person, or the pers- the owner would be like, my kids watch you. I watch you. My wife watches you. My husband yeah. watches you, whatever. And they went out of their way to say, you know what? It's comped. Yeah. Fucking go, girl, boy, whatever. Yeah. But you don't go out there being like, no. this is it. I want Give it for me. free. No. No. But also, talking about things that are, like, relatively shit, uh, this is, yeah, sad. Holden is retiring the Commodore after 41 years. So, um, those of you out there who are familiar with the Australian car industry... Commodore, sorry, Holdens, uh, for anyone who's not of the Southern Hemisphere, uh, it's your Chevys. So, Mm, in Australia, we call it Holden. We call it Holden. Um, Ford is Ford, but we have... Holden, where you guys have Chevy, and yeah. it's literally exact same. It's the, it's exactly the same except the badge is different. <laughs> yep. That's it, and it's actually a meme in Australia to actually remove your Holden logo, like yeah, logo, and put the Chevy yeah. on there instead. And people actually do that for the um, Camaros. Yeah. That's so, the only one in Australia that is acceptable to do, and no one will judge you. Yeah. But other people do it for other cars, and everyone laughs. Yeah, it's rather funny. But, but uh, the uh, Holden Commodore was actually manufactured here in Australia. Um, and they switched from, that off a few years ago. Yeah, 1978 to 2017, in case anyone was interested. And uh, if anyone's wondering, like this is the it's one of two Aussie cars. Yeah, Holden right? Ford Bathurst. This is what that. It's our uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Exactly. In Australia. So that's it. It's, you know. We don't have, we have GM here, but it's yeah, considered so a little different. But um, it's one of the two, if you're an Aussie and you're a tradie or whatever, Toyota's picking up, but it's either, if you're Aussie, Aussie, true blue, it's either Holden or Ford and you pick one. And yep. it's not both. And it's really serious because a family will be one car for generations. And this is like the first time they're cutting it off in 41 years. So exclusively, they're just going to be doing SUVs, so special utility vehicles and utes now. <sighs> yeah. Fuck, there goes my... I wonder if that means that they're cutting all sedans, though. Like, does that mean they're still cutting the Senator, the Club Sport? All gone. But no. the Club Sport's technically not a Commodore. No, it's all Holden. So essentially what's going to be coming out now are just SUVs and utes. And now he's, what SUVs does Holden have? They have the, the Colorado, right? Yeah. But here's the scary thing. Isuzu outsells Holden with just two vehicles. Yeah. They have the van. An SUV and then. a ute. It's all about SUVs and utes. That's really nice. So essentially... If what, it's business savvy, do it. But, but it's so bad now that Holden dealerships and Ford dealerships... Are punching. Are punching out other... Um, I guess they're cars. making it the loss. Yeah, and well, like Toyota, like loss. Toyota is making a like, Toyota Suzuki. They're huge. If I wanted a Ute, or like I reckon I'd get a truck. So like what the US considers a truck, right? Yeah. But I would get like a. I like the Toyota Hiluxes because they're safer. Yeah. They're better f- uh, fuel economy, and it's not like the Holdens where or the Fords where the back seat is like flat hard back. If you get in a twin cab. So I like the Hiluxes. Yeah, I remember honest. one of my mates uh, drove a crewman. So A lot of, especially Aussie farmers. You yeah. guys had a... No, you we, guys were Ford. Yeah, we were Ford. Bad. So, uh, yeah. But, um, yeah, so Holden's on the way out. 41 years. Now I must and ask then, us, poof. is does that mean the Falcons... Are going yeah because the Ford equivalent yep the Falcons are going too is that real or yeah the Fords and the Falcons are going <laughs> the Fords and the Falcon you know the yeah. Falcons and the Commodores but it's okay because the Fords that are left can be found on rusty driveways if they're pulled up in your driveway you'd say oh no, no a, a drug, drug dealer, dealer lives here yeah. yeah so uh, but on the topic of drug dealers and missing cars a Chilean military plane carrying thirty eight people goes missing on route to Antarctica do you know that I found out. That Antarctica, sorry, to go to Antarctica, you can only travel from a certain amount of places, right? Yeah. And Chile is one of those places. But why is it so chilly? Anyway, uh, so apparently a C-130 Hercules cargo plane departing from Punta Arenas lost communication while flying uh, to the Antarctic Air Base. And this was reported by Chile's Air Force 
um, carried 17 crew members, 21 passengers. A search and rescue mission is underway. Uh, I checked this about five minutes ago. Nothing new had been reported. So that's yeah. what's really sad. Sad. Good luck. I yeah. hope they're okay. Yeah, he's hoping. So, yeah. Well, jokes aside, that's a shit scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pray and that's it. Yep. All right, let's launch into today's topic. I'm sorry it's taken us so long to get there. Yeah, but also, just quickly. I guess um, so. You know, if there's anybody who has any topic queries, just PM Let us, us. know. Let us know. Let, leave a comment, email us, yeah. fa- uh, all our links, whether you want to contact us individually. We will. Whatever your social yeah. media preference is, we're there. We will get back to you. We, we want engagement. We want to, you know, yep. we want to you? discuss. So, uh, as mentioned uh, previously <laughs> on last week's episode... Um, we discussing. You, you put in a special request. I put in a special request. And I, I paid out. I put in an Uber. Um, <laughs> so we're doing bioluminescence. 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 That's what I've been saying the yeah. whole week since you asked me. Um, so uh, just some quick references before we get started. And just As, quickly, yes, sorry. just quickly because just just because it's bioluminescence and I, you yeah. know, I enjoy bioluminescence. No, actually, we should Can probably I just do my references yeah, before do, we get started. Yeah, sorry. Disclaimer before. first. Um, before we get started, I want to mention that between us, we have over six degrees, both graduate and undergraduate in science between us. So we are, I want to say qualified to yeah, discuss this topic. we are qualified topic. to discuss um, this. We personally, when we live in the lab, use this. Yeah. Um, trend in biology yeah. pretty much every day. Yeah, every day. Um, so I would like to reference Nat Geo for their animal-based information that I didn't know about because I use it for more, we use it for more the biotech side. Uh, good living for locations that show bioluminescence that I'm going to talk about today and the conversation for some other bioremedial applications of bioluminescence that, again, I had no idea about until you asked me to yeah. uh, research. It is topic. really, really intriguing. You and, knew. That's why you wanted me to do it. Yeah. But, I didn't but also feel free to uh, go through nature.com because oh, all the frontline stuff. Beautiful pictures. Mm, and cell yeah, too. Cell too. Uh, and also nerve. If you're interested in CNS, like central nervous system tissue, yeah. whether it be nerve cells, whatever, glia. Yeah. Beautiful. If you want some stuff, uh, go to my Instagram. I generally post um, kind of on a break at the moment, but in my day-to-day life, uh, you will check. You can check it out on my IG stories. I generally post a lot about my pretty, pretty pictures. I think I have some on my feed. Yeah. Um, I post the ones that I'm most favorite about. So did you have anything to say before I teach you? <laughs> um, well, first of all, I was just going to like break it down real simply as an intro saying um, bioluminescence um, is essentially... Okay, it's it's complex, but it's simple. But essentially... I, I really broke it down to yeah. basics. I so, tried to do that. So essentially what we were looking at it, and everyone knows about glowing jellyfish and everything. So yeah. think of it this way. There are bio... Don't give away spoilers. Sorry. I'm getting through it. Okay. There are bioluminescent <laughs> organisms um, that use or make their own light by mixing chemicals. Yeah. That is the simplest way of putting it. Now... Although bioluminescence uses, you know, the same three broad types of chemicals, um, there's speciatial, uh, sorry, species difference between the exact chemicals. So they might be a different colour and have yes. other properties. We yes. can discuss that if that's what someone wants to hear because we can talk about that. And we can, we're can we going to talk about it later on, but I want to just call it right now GFP. If someone wants a podcast topic about GFP... yeah. We can uh, do a whole podcast. No on. issue. I'll reference it a little bit today and talk about it. But if you want in-depth stuff, again, just be sure to let us know what you're after. Yeah. Um, so you're ready to go? You're buckled up? Yeah. Now, also, just just quickly. So no, he's not buckled up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, just quickly. No, no, no. No, 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 no fire away. <laughs> no, go. What? No, fire away. No, seriously. I'm going to start it until you say. I'll just shoot stereo. I wasn't having a go. Uh, are, we, are we sure that, that I should? Just do it. You sure? Yeah, if I have to repeat something you said, I don't mind. As long as you guys at home don't mind. Just hit it. No, no. Well, do it. Do it. I'm but, not going to talk until you go. Well, no, no, no. It's all good about no, it. No, seriously, please. I don't but, care how stupid it is. Just go. I was just saying that most people would look at um, fireflies as yes. a very good, good example. example of bioluminescence. Yes. I'm going to say that in about three minutes. Oh, cool. Sorry. Okay. Oh, good. Back, Buckled back, up. Back to Stephanie. Buckled up. Arms, legs inside the vehicle at all times. Yes. All right, please stop me if there's something you want to discuss because I don't know what you're thinking until you say something. All right? Yeah. So just pause me when you're ready. Yeah. Um, so to give you the most basic rundown I can in about a couple minutes, first off, biology loves colour. Whether it's a bird's feathering or plumage to attract a mate 
or a flower trying to attract bees for pollination. Ecosystems life depends on colours. Uh, basically, we've been lectured hundreds of times and I'm going to skip a one hour lecture breakdown on how this shit works. So I'm going to give you a 1.5 minute crash course. Do it. Uh, say that I'm looking at a blue mug. I'm looking at your white mug, but for the okay, purpose it's a of this mug. argument, the white it's mug a, is now it's a blue, blue mug. mug, right? Yes. The mug, it's blue, it's is blue. absorbing all colours, which are called wavelengths in physics, of light. But it's reflecting blue light, and that's the light that I can perceive. Yes. Right? So I can see that and go, oh, that's a blue mug. Now, the really cool thing that, about bioluminescence is a specific protein. So something in your DNA that's coded for whether it be man-made or fanny nature and then man-made or adjusted or whatever, has been created to produce and emit light at a specific colour or wavelength. Uh, this is where I talked about, I wanted to mention, as you did, fireflies. It's the most common thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to toast? Yeah. So their glow um, is bioluminescent in nature. Theirs is actually called uh, luciferin. Luciferase, yeah. Oh, sorry, that's right, luciferase, because it's an enzyme. Yes. Um, so the way that this actually works is called chemiluminescence. Yes. And it's just a fancy word to pretty much say that it's converting one chemical form of energy into a radiant form of energy. So in terms of the fireflies, the luciferase is breaking down the luciferin yes. uh, protein and it makes it emit a colour. Um, and that's what you can see. Yes. So because it's almost... Oh, uh, may I yes, just quickly add in? The reason why is because luciferase binds oxygen and luciferin together. Yes. And it's a... What's, there's, there's a reaction for that. I can't... Like, what's it, that enzyme... Fun, class. There's a class of that enzyme where it takes two things and adds them together. It's not a hyd, hyd, hydrolase. No, it's not hydro. Is it hydrolase? You think hydrolysis? No, no, because no, there's there's ly lysases, hydrolases. There's like six classes of enzyme. Um, but that's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> Can you find it? I'm, I'm you get just, what I'm, I mean, right? I'm just having to there's think. There's lysases, amylases. Um, um, oh, protease. So you've it. got amylase, protease, and lipase. No, 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 no. That's incorrect. Yeah. There's six classes of enzyme. Yes. Oh, Matt is going to be so pissed off at me. I aced this on my exam two years ago. Yeah, so I'm not in an enzyme essentially you have oxoreductases, oh, yes. transferases, hydrolases. Yes. So essentially. But there's one enzyme. What's the yeah. name of the, what's the enzyme ligases, class where they take two, uh, two isomerases. substrates? That's it. They take two substrates yeah. and they make a product. So just to quickly break this down, just in, pay, in case people were interested. You know, obviously we're going to have a bit of fun and games with this, but uh, in all sensibility, the enzyme categories and their functions follow. You have oxoreductases. The function of these are... Oxid are you basic oxfos, so oxidation reduction? Yeah, oxfos, reduction. oxidation reduction reactions. You have hydrolases, um, and these... It, it's essentially a hydrolysis it. reaction, yeah. which tr is the transfer of a functional group to water. Yep. You have transferases, which are group transfers. So that can be anything from an yeah. amine or whatever. It's exactly. very, very basic again. You have isomerases. Um, and that does as you think it just changes. Yeah, isomerase, the... intramolecular group So transfer. you're just changing where stuff is on the branch yes. of the actual molecule. You have lyases. That's it. It's yeah. a ligase. Which is I'm such an idiot. the removal or the addition of groups to form double bonds. So you're bonds. basically taking one or two things and making yes. it one thing. So you're joining molecules together. Yes. And then there's... Did we miss one? No, I think we've got oxidoreductase. Oxo oxidoreductases. Yeah. Transferases, hydrolases, lyases, isomerases, and ligases. Sorry, ignore me. Yeah, so, so it's a ligase. Yeah. Right? So that's what Which goes on in the firefly. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so because it's because uh, chemiluminescence is almost 100% chemically efficient, yeah. that means that little to no heat is produced. Yeah, just light. And because of that reason, they call it cold light um, because that's not scientific term enough. They call it luminescence. Yeah. And did you know that the firefly is the most, well, it has the ability to produce the most efficient light in the world. It essentially emits 100% of its mm. energy as light. Mm -hmm. So... Why aren't we harnessing any of that for light? Exactly. Stuff? Um, so basically, to put this in kind of what 
is more common and as we talk about you guys all it makes more of sense i guess yeah uh, knowledge more kind of common uh it's estimated that 76 percent of this where i read it in that geo they're like 76 percent of ocean animals are bioluminescent and i was like uh 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 you, what you mean is you estimate that 70 76 percent of known or yeah. identified animals yeah in uh, ocean animals are bioluminescent so i'm sorry there nat geo yeah uh marine creatures rely on bioluminescence for a lot of things um nat geo actually has a beautiful infographic that i can link and they say uh for they utilize it for communication finding prey camouflage uh defense defense offense yeah. sorry defense yeah. uh, surveillance um it's also it's so important in marine animals that the trait has evolved 27 times in ray finned fishes alone yeah. and that's actually very unique so it means that these groups were not their species dif differentiated so they're not mating together they within their own let's call them clans have evolved it 27 times because that's how important this trait is yeah um so in the marine world i figured that the best example would be the angelfish so you yeah. know in finding nemo um how dory and the dad are swimming in the deep sea looking for nemo yeah. and then there's a bright light and dory's like oh let's go swim to it Ooh, and then this terrifying monster swimming, right swimming yep that is called an, ang an angelfish yeah angelfish. and so that's like the most i figured common yeah uh, its teeth are just uh, oh, that's scary that's what scares me to be yeah. honest yeah um and it's got just how big are they the angelfish yeah um let's yeah let's look sorry up. this is a podcast of detours <laughs> so um is yeah. it angelfish i thought it, they were called angelfish uh, they are, right? Yeah, angle angelfish fish. glow in the dark, but it's a different kind of that particular one. What you're looking at? Oh, lanternfish. Yeah, there's the lanternfish. Yeah. But the angelfish or angelfish? No, not angelfish. No, I'm but about angelfish angel. glow in the dark. Yeah, but that's not what I was talking about. No, they're fluorescent. I was talking about the ones that have the bait. And you know why they're fun, fluorescent? You know, because for prey, they want to look like a bigger animal. No. Because and in school, they want to flip like they look like a big A company animal. in Taiwan oh. created ornamental fish. Oh, they created fluorescent angel fish to be sold as pets. So that's not traditional bioluminescence. That is fluorescent. Manufactured. Manufactured. Lab laboratory manufacturing. Yes. Yeah. So that's not bioluminescence. And I'm not saying we stand by that. No, if yeah. it was a tree that was plant, you know, made to be super absorbent of carbon carbon emissions and fluoresce like a light post but we'll talk about that later yeah um so one thing that i had no idea about until i had to research this episode of the podcast was that freshwater animals are not big users of bioluminescence at no. all and it's re scientists reason that this could be could be two main reasons why um and one is that freshwater habitats have not been around for as long as marine habitats no. so because we know that evolution is a slow process it means that freshwater fish just don't have the biodiversity that oceans have and that makes sense where we're talking about oh it's evolved 27 times in this one kind of group of fish alone yep in you know in i guess uh, saltwater fish and a second reason is that maybe freshwater species wouldn't really benefit from bioluminescence because that water is typically murkier um as opposed to like an ocean where not so much now anymore in one day with all the dumping that's going on. Um, but deep sea uses, you know, we have that as well where it's in the dark, um, but we're forever in fresh, however in fresh water, they, they think that stuff like, you know how catfish have whiskers? Yes. It may be just a different kind of sensory adaptation. So it's more worried about touch as opposed to light. Yes. So, feel like a different kind of sensory simulation so touching something as opposed to seeing something um to be able to hunt and defend your environment so there's this doctor uh eddie widler and he's a marine biologist and he's also the founder of ocean research conservation association and he states that this is because few bioluminescent fish can tolerate low salinity yeah so it's actually down to their osmolar osmolarity 
Uh, so the only known example of bioluminescence in the freshwater animal is Let uh, Latia neritodes, <laughs> and it's a limpet-like snail. So it's basically a snail that pretty much looks jet black and has some orange speckles to it. And it's native to uh, streams in New Zealand, and it emits a glowing slime in defense to ward off potential predators. So it itself is not bioluminescent, but what it releases or secretes is. And it looks so cool, but again, I'm not encouraging anyone to go out steal any of these. Um, watch documentaries, look at pictures. If you see one in the wild, that's great, but you know, don't disturb them. Um, I just thought it was really cool. There may be other examples that I missed, so if so, please be sure to let us know. Yeah. Um, the one that's most kind of applicable to us and where we kind of come in as scientists, we're predominantly in the bioimaging field. Yeah. Uh, so the most famous and groundbreaking example in science is green fluorescent protein, and we affectionately refer to it as GFP. Again, if you want a specific episode topic about it that goes in depth, please be sure to let us know. Yes. And trivia... About the GFP, the GFP was actually identified in a jellyfish called Aquaria Victoria. I was getting to that, but yes, thank you. Because I've got a pun. <laughs> What's your pun? And it's more. Is it punny? I hopefully think so. <laughs> it's going back to what you were saying about Finding Nemo. Yes. And he, he does. With I've it. been hanging on this, but he does with it. Okay. Um, would hypothetically uh, this mean that jellyfish? are sad most of the time and that's all they're always gloomy because there's no peanut butter fish that's actually really good it's not a laughing joke it's more like a riddle yeah but so, i get it <laughs> so <laughs> peanut butter jelly time peanut, peanut butter, butter jelly, jelly time, time. Yeah. yeah okay so um but also just quickly too i Go, hit us with I, it. I this just is your find, podcast too, mate. Yeah, GFP is um, one of those things that has revolutionised science in the sense. That's, that's and also, what I'm saying. I, yeah. I want to get into stuff that we actually talk about as yeah, well, right? But if people want, don't want to hear it, uh, we'll just tell you to skip that episode that particular week. But if anyone really wants to hear about it, I'll move it up in my schedule, if yep. that makes sense, my research schedule, because I plan things out a little bit. But I don't care if someone wants me to move things around. Just let us know what you want to hear. Uh, so, basically, getting back to GFP, uh, Roger Y. Thiessen, uh, Osamu Shimura, and Martin Shalfi were awarded the 2008 Nobel Prize in Chemistry on the 10th of October, 2008, for their discovery and their development of GFP. Uh, it emits a bright green fluorescence, hence why the green, when it's exposed to light in the blue ultraviolet um, wavelength. Uh, although many other marine organisms have similar green uh, fluorescent or bioluminescence. GFP traditionally refers to the protein that, as Michael said, uh, is, was first isolated from the jellyfish Aquaria Victoria. And if you ask us how important that is to know in biology, it's literally an exam question in every biochem exam. If you don't know this, you literally they you kick you out of the program. This is key um, knowledge. Key basic knowledge. knowledge. You need to do this to do any kind of protein expression so whatsoever. we talk we can talk that's why i was saying like we yeah. talk about this because unfortunately if i develop alzheimer's these are the stupid things that i'm gonna remember that i don't really need to know um so a little bit more just about gfp in case anyone's interested it's what's termed a reporter gene so you can attach it to genes that you're stuttering uh it can be identified and measured generally by fluorescence it allows you to trace and monitor activity of a gene that you're studying in particular so you can track its expression in a cell uh its interaction with other chemicals or other proteins um i don't want to talk about it too much just put a couple of sentences here in case you didn't want to but you did a lot of protein expression uh yes yeah, so essentially what i was using was bacteria to express um essentially in layman's terms um, to make a specific protein. Yeah. So essentially, I want to see where this protein is. So yeah, I tag. where it lives in a cell, pretty much. Yeah. So, so you know the cell makes it, but where does the cell put it? Yeah. So essentially, um, I add the GFP molecule um, or se protein sequence to the protein that I want to express. So it's tagged, and then that way I can grow or could watch um, when the colonies. I can look at them and choose only the colonies of bacteria that made this specific visually, protein you point out because visually. visually because also what would happen too is you'd make so essentially you'd tag the cells with the gfp but they'd also have an antibiotic resistance um element to it element so what would happen uh, is, yeah. yeah 
ampicillin. So you'd expose these agar plates to ampicillin. It would kill off the bacteria without the tag. And essentially what you would have the left, hypothetically, the... is just the colonies bacteria the expressing the protein of interest and the tag. Yeah. So then essentially you, you can... You're not 100% guaranteed, but you're a lot yeah. more confident that the cells you're grabbing yeah. are. Um, and you did a lot of staining and stuff with confocal. Yes, yeah, so um, I did a lot of live imaging. Yeah. So there tracking are tracking it in real time under a microscope. It, yes, so GFP is extremely common. Every, I suppose, every lab science, has it. Every lab has it. Every scientist it is going to use it at ways. some point in their career. Yeah, um, and there are multiple colors as well. Yes, you know you can do all sorts. If you, can, for instance, if you follow the RGB curve, you can put a lot There's in. There's a ton. There's a ton. Um, so my job, or studying, kind of a job now that <laughs> if they're paying you money to do it, <laughs> it's a job. Um, so fifty percent of my work is bioimaging. Um, a part of that is me actually watching mice and then and like analyzing that data on recorded footage and the other part of bioimaging is again is that I do it in sections of tissue um, so massive 30 microns so what is it 0.30 yeah. uh, section you know centimeter thick yeah sections uh, and basically I have these thick sections of tissue I chuck specific antibodies on them and they look for a specific protein that I'm looking for so if I want to look for neurons I'll chuck something that's specific for neurons on there theoretically hopefully they should bind and then I add a second antibody that's specific for the first antibody that I put down and attached to that is the reporter color uh, if I want green I put a green I actually use uh, typically 488 which is the wavelength that we were talking about instead of saying oh it's this specific color being green 488 is what we call it in the lab. So that shows up as green. And typically the thing that I'm looking for, whether it be platelets or whatever, because my lab, our lab, primarily focuses on yeah. platelets. Um, and because they're a lot smaller, it's a lot easier to track. So I use them because it's the unknown. And then I also use red. Uh, so we have a few of those in lab. We have 547. Uh, we have, is it 599? Yeah. For all, we've got like, we've also got far red, which is like, other stuff and 647 which um you can make purple yeah so you can and then there's also um which what i'll be doing next year and that's multiplex immunohistochemistry so you can stain for six things at once which is hopefully going to look so amazing uh so basically that's what i do i chuck all the specific colors that i want on there i chuck it under a fluorescent microscope and then I see where the colors are and so therefore where the protein is. And then I take it one step further than that. And then I actually 3D reconstruct the image that I've taken or the stack, if you will, or series of images. And I reconstruct them and recreate it digitally based on what the bioluminescence was. And I guess to people who aren't scientists, it's not really great and interesting. But it's pretty cool. I think it's cool. It's But the thing that makes it really cool is... What they the, what have they've done with mice? Yeah. Uh, I have a fur, fur is, same yeah. as um, frogs. And yeah. what you can do is it goes through when they grow, and, and then you can, you can actually look at them in real time. Mm. And this is where you can do in vitro and in vivo studies yeah. of um, animals. If you well, that's what our yeah. lab is typically yeah. in vitro. Yeah. Um, so again, another thing that I spoke about in the beginning that I had no idea about was you can use bioluminescence as a monitoring tool in bioremediation. So this, for example, one is like the best way to describe this is there's a man-made event. Uh, let's take into consideration something like an oil spill in the ocean or leftover toxicity at a retired petrol station site. Uh, so you can maybe there's a bacteria or a fungi that is capable of metabolizing or breaking down some of those toxic compounds, whether it be in the soil or, for example, on the surface of the ocean. Right? Yep. Let's just use that as a hypothetical example. And so, um, hopefully, you you want the organism to be able to break down those compounds, and you want to monitor it using bioluminescence. Yes. Um, so I actually went to PubMed. And I found just this one specific paper, and I'm highlighting this one as the example because it's the most common, like, it had the most um, impact. Yep. So that means it's been cited the most, it's been read the most. Yep. And it's titled Bioremediation of Contaminated Soils by Hydrocarbons Degrading Bacteria and Decontamination Control. I'm not going to read the whole abstract, but it was written by Stefano um, Girotti et al., uh, what have we got here? It was in Soil Chemical Pollution Risk Assessment Remediation Security, pages 369 to 383. 
Um, shit, I'm so sorry. I cropped out this DOI. Also, I'm just idiot. correct the two for people who are interested. There's actually two types of bioremediation. You have what is known as phytoremediation and so that means mycoremediation. Light. Myco being uh, fungi. Yeah. Um, so just highlighting the first sentence of this abstract of this paper. Uh, in this study, three strains of Vibrio marine bioluminescent bacteria have been employed to measure the biotoxicity of hydrocarbon contaminated soils from oil terminals. So what that means is they've taken three marine species of bioluminescent bacteria and then they've chucked them in contaminated or in soil that had been contaminated by um, again like a petrol station site and they monitored them so the bacteria were placed at the site they were left to habituate for four months and then the soil was tested for contaminants and the levels of biofluorescence and compared to what the soil was like before the treatment started um, so I think that that's you know really cool it's not really put out there because a lot of people don't feel good about, no. you know, they equate it to a lot of like, oh, look at Australia releasing rabbits to curb. What were they trying to curb? No, they released cane toads to curb carp. No, carp was for something else. Um, what was carp released for? Well, carp is a pest. Yeah, but they were, it, it was the, brought. It was introduced by the French as food. Yeah. However, the carp destroy local river because networks. Because they make it all They're murky bottom feeders and, shit, right? and they disrupt the cod. Cane toads were released for what reason again? Uh, Alright, uh, I geez. should. Yeah. Um, what is it? Yeah, because carp are freshwater. Um, but they're, I think they're like native to Europe. Asia. Oh, because uh, sugar cane was a big crop in Australia. And so they've released uh, cane toads to curb cane beetles. But then after the cane beetles had all gone, the cane toads evolved to yeah. uh, be pests, right? Yeah. So in that kind of light, and there's different stories around all around the world, um, people are very not happy about using no. kind of mass release project. No. It's not so much a mass release project, but people are kind of worried about projects of this nature, if that makes sense. So while there is evidence to suggest it could be useful... Um, like, I think it would be safer if, say, they dug out all... I don't know, imagine how many millions of dollars that would cost, right? Dug out all the dirt, chucked it in a vat, and then chucked the bacteria in there and mixed it over and monitored it and then treated the dirt and then put it back. And on the topic of wiping out species, another thing that people... Like, especially in America, this is an American thing, uh, boll weevils, uh, cotton farms. So, essentially, there's... Yeah. there's I'm not going to go further, but boll weevils... Uh, people change crops and they actually make crops, GMO crops. And then they evolve. And they evolve. And they get worse. So essentially and then they have, um, what do they call them? Buffer crops. Yes. So, so the got... idea is, like, say you have the safe one where you don't want the bugs to go, but then between that and the next row you have the buffer crop. Yep, so they so can that thrive. way the bacteria will, not the bacteria, so the beetles will move to that crop specifically yep. and infect that crop specifically. Because you don't want to get a speciation event. evolution. No. Yeah. So, uh and unfortunately, yeah. when they introduced the, the carp, the carp just decimated the cod population. Cod populations have dropped. So, But you can eat carp. People actually eat carp. They capture mm. these massive Apparently carp and put it in Apparently, you soak it in milk and for put, a while. And put it in bathtubs. Yeah, so you like, let it clear out, out the, out the yeah. shit. Yeah. And then apparently you... Literally. And then you apparently you cut it, you fillet it, and you soak it in milk. Yeah. I've never done it myself, but apparently that's what you do. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Um, my... Mum's dad, my mum's dad used to go where you used to live yeah. to fish there so, to get carp. So oof. that's why when my when you tell my grandmother where you lived and your farm yeah. and stuff, she's like, "Oh yes, my husband yeah. went here camping for camping." Yeah. So anyway, sorry to get back to bioluminescence. So more recently, bioluminescence has evolved from a laboratory tool to commerciality, and let's just say there's a lot of scams. Yeah. I'm highlighting two specifically today. So. I had heard about this years ago, literally. So there was one Kickstarter that um, f that funded a San Francisco-based project called the Glowing Plant Project. Sorry, the Glowing Plant Project. And so what they wanted to offer was customers a DIY kit where they could, on their own, genetically engineer a uh, Aridopsis plant to use at home. Now, an Aridopsis plant is what's called a model organism. If you're going to look at anything that 
you know, is a plant. If you're researching plants in the lab, one of the first plant species you're going to use is Arabidopsis. So it's one of the most basic things you can do. You did that yep. in one of your semesters. Yep. I did that. So that's the idea. It's like one of the most basic plants. It's very hardy. Hence why it's good for research. And so um, I chased their Kickstarter. I'm not going to link it because, again, it's all a scam. But when I went to their Kickstarter, ask me how, think, guesstimate how much money they made, they, that they raised for their Kickstarter. Uh, I'm going to say 500000 Actually, really close. $484,013. Shit. Um, and they had a goal of $65,000, right? So keep that in mind. They said that they needed $65,000 to figure out how to make these kicks, kits, right? And they received well, well over, you know, what they needed. Approximately 8,433 people were scammed. So at that point, I didn't know that. So I noticed that the campaign had not been updated since the 12th of December, 2017. They linked their Etsy store, and um, so you know what Etsy is, right? It's yeah. like the arts and crafts version of um, eBay. That's where I buy all the D&D stuff and our dice from, like our custom yep. shit, right? Um, so the Etsy store link was no longer the Etsy anymore. It redirected to gro- glowingplant.com. But then you know when the link breaks and it's like yep. the server cannot connect to whatever it is because the link doesn't exist anymore? And then I did some digging and found that Business Insider covered this whole story in August of 2017. Um, Again, the paper was called Glowing Plant Kickstarter Campaign or Bella Moss. Um, So just to pretty much paraphrase the story, uh, this is me taking it from their paper. Um, Sorry, the article. Uh, After a series of missteps, the creators gave up on their idea of making genetically modified glowing plants and turned their attention to GMO-scented moss. Now the moss is available for purchase, but some backers of the glowing plant project are still unhappy. So, the Kickstarter was pretty much, uh, and then it goes on saying like it attracted, but the Kickstarter attracted boatloads of supporters. It fizzled out after hitting and surpassing the fundraising goal. Um, the people behind the failed campaign had no real plan for getting out their product, what they were developing, into the large numbers of... You know, we're talking almost 9,000 people who had pledged money to this project, which is devastating, right? So, hypothetically, we are not liking this moss. No, we're not liking this moss. And this was even before it was a moss, right? And just in case you're wondering, I did, in fact, say lichen, L-I-C-H-E-N, then, not liking, lichen. Uh, Yeah, yeah, bad pun. So, pretty much... It was labelled a sham. Uh, so after that, they raised, again, like we said, nearly half a million dollars to create their Adopsis plant to glow, but they didn't work. Uh, they never prom- They never delivered what they promised. And the person, the CEO, who was behind the, t- ki- the Kickstarter, and at the time he was CEO of Taxa Biotechnologies, um, I haven't looked to see if that's still around. I hope it's not. And his quote was, it was too ambitious ambitious for what's possible with synthetic biology at the moment. So, they had all this money, right? They needed to save face. Oh, heck yeah. So, then it went from the glowing plant to scented moss. Yeah, right. So, a couple months after that, you know, people weren't really happy, so they decided to use the money for something else. I found, if you go down the Kickstarter page, you can find this other link, and it's, I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want you to go to it, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Not that you can give them your money anymore, but I don't want to give them, all right. It's Orbella Moss, right? Yeah. And it was some really weird WordPress blog, like, it was creepy. There were only four posts on there, apart from their contact, and to contact them, it wasn't like a proper email address to email them it was like you know how you fill out a form yep. and then all that stuff so you can't directly contact them personally you have to it has to be a, like a it's directed through their web page so you don't know what the email address is unless they respond to you and you know no one's going to be responding if they're shut down one of the four posts i think it was the second one you have to scroll down was like 
like a certain amount of plants. I can't remember if it was like top five or top six or top ten plants you can put around the ho- your home. As I'm not going to use the words they use, but as an aphrodisiac scent. Oh, gosh. If you get what I mean. I felt so uncomfortable. I'm so sorry to the ASIO agent who monitors my, my internet. Hello. <laughs> uh, I hope I'm doing you proud. Um, and then at the end of the day, I couldn't find any link to buy the moss anywhere. So it was a scam that they covered with another scam. Right? And that's as far as that one goes. And so there's a second bioluminescent scam. Scam Again, another California-based company. This one was called Biopop. And they tried to release what... So you know how there's a seam monkeys, right? Yeah. But it's actually brine shrimp. <laughs> they tried to make them fluorescent using uh. biofluorescence, right? Except they called it the dino pet. So instead of having a bowl that you're supposed to put it in, it was like a bronchosaurus, oh, but no. a plasticky looking one. Uh, right? Hence, Dino Pet. Um, sorry, it was an Apatrosaurus shaped aquarium yeah. filled with the plankton um, called Dino Flagellates, hence the Dino Pet. And so during the day, you're supposed to have it obviously not in direct sunlight because you don't want them to boil in the water. But the idea is that they would. So they're not true um, luminescence, bioluminescence. It's no. the photosynthetic bioluminescence that you referenced earlier, right? Yeah. So they're there to they make the light like a plant does, they photosynthesize. Yep. So they don't make the light. They utilize the light, in chlor- like what the planet uses chloroplasts for, right? And then at night, periodically, it's dark. Uh, if you switch off all the lights, you should see it, like, and apparently give the aquarium a good shake, is what they said. That's not me saying it. That's yeah, what they said. Um... And your giant flagellates will light up turqu- uh, turquoise. So I looked up their website. Um, again, I'm going to say its name because you can't actually pledge any money. So it's not like I'm directing anyone yeah. to the scam. Uh, Biopop.com. And this is a message. Thank you for visiting our site. However, we have closed for business and will no longer be selling or supporting Biopop products nor taking any additional orders. We have enjoyed being able to bring to people interactive and living products that inspire connectivity and the natural world and hope that an appreciation for biological science continues to awaken the imaginations in minds of all generations. Their social medias, Instagrams and shit, are still not, like, shut off, closed, Disac- de- deactivated everything still links to this website Jeez. but at least you can't spend money so yep. there's another fail there yep um, dude this one was right up your alley apparently bioluminescence has played a part in modern warfare yeah bioluminescent organisms aided in the sinking of the last German U-boat during World War One in November of 1918 so a submarine the submarine was reported to have sailed through some bioluminescent so plumage, so the bacteria were in the ocean, like what we talked about before, um, and it was pretty much dragged through. Yep. And that pretty much left a glowing wake behind it, which the Allies were able to track. And there was another instance where in the aftermath of uh, one of the bloodiest battles in the American Civil War at Shiloh, uh, wounds of some of the injured soldiers began to glow, and it was reported that these glowing wounds healed more quickly and cleanly, and this phenomenon was labelled Angel's Glow. Um, it was probably produced by Phorobatus luminescence, which is a soil-dwelling bacterium, and it releases microbial compounds. So uh, that's where you get your your resistance, like your ampicillin. That's where you actually get antibiotics from. Yeah. And that would make sense being decades ago, decades, centuries ago, because uh, yeah, antibacterial resistance wasn't around then. No. Um, so that was thought to have protected the soldiers from infection. And I'm questioning why this hasn't been used in medicine today. I'm guessing because you can technically synthesize the anti, like microbials, yep. so the, the antibiotics on their own. You don't need to chuck the bacteria on there. But like, could you imagine if that was a thing and it helped? Yeah, that'd be. I mean, epic. people use slugs. People use other weird shit. Yeah. I mean, people crazy fucking shit. eating flatworms to fucking make themselves thin. You know what I mean? There's the stupidest shit out there. Oh yeah. Um, so the last little bit, if you want to see bioluminescence out there in the wild, right, and you don't want to, you know, affect any sort of biosystem like the poor little snails, I'm not saying go there and pick them up. That is not what I'm saying. No. I'm saying look into the image. Um, if you're lucky enough and you do see one, that doesn't mean you steal it, no. all right? Uh, so if you want to see some bioluminescence and you don't want to really, you know, affect nature, 
Um, I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to swim deep enough to go see one of them grumpy fish that no. Dory and Nemo's dad had to go see. Uh, so there's this species called the Noctilia scintillans. It's known as sea sparkle. It's a microscopic organism, um, and it produces flashes of light in response to physical disturbances and waves breaking the shore. Or, for example, when the stone is th- thrown into the bloom, so it's like surveillance. Um, and so there are five bioluminescent bays in the world that um, are, what's that word I'm looking for? Inoculated with this kind of um, bacteria. And this phytoplankton, sorry, not bacteria. Uh, so there's the Luminous Lagoon in Jamaica, Ha Long Bay in Vietnam, and there are three in Puerto Rico, so the Laguna Grande, uh, La P- P- Paraguera, and Mosquito Bay, <laughs> which I'm sorry, I'm not going to Mosquito Bay. And they've also... Australia gets a lot of blooms because of our, especially Melbourne, um, because of our hot, cold temperatures and stuff. So every now and again, as well as um, in Tassie, yeah, there are Um, some blooms. It's just the Barrier Reef. Even a lot of lakes. There's um, Um, lots of lakes that. So you can go to um, smartertravel.com, and you can actually see images of what all these beaches look like if that's what you're interested in. And yeah, that's kind of where my research ended. One quick thing, back to bioremediation, only yeah. because I find it fascinating. And we mentioned three types. So we mentioned microbial bioremediation. Micro. Um, yep, so myco bioremediation. So That's a fungi one. Essentially, micro is to use microorganisms. And they what essentially they do is they break down the contaminants as, as because they use it as a food source. The second one, or third one, whichever order you want it in, um, which was phytoremediation and... What they do is they use plants which bind, extract, and clean up pollutants. Um, and these pollutants could be things like pesticides, um, metals, po- oh, well, more petroleum-based, um, So petro- because obviously oil spills and stuff. Um, petroleum, hydrocarbons, uh, chlorinated solvents, metals, that sort of stuff. And micro-remediation, which is um, fungi. And what the fungi does, um, it uses digestive enzymes to break down contaminants um, like hydrocarbons, pesticides, and heavy metals. And the beauty about this is you can also switch it into crime scene cleanups. So you can use bioremediation to clean up a crime scene. So, um, and this is obviously after testing has been done. Yeah. Now, also, too, I'll be clear, the, there's no overlap. Um, it's either one fields. or the other. It's one or the other. It's either bioremediation yeah. um, in a crime scene or bioremediation for an oil spill. Yeah. It's it's a you different kind of You don't use the same cleanup. bacteria for no. each setting. It needs to be specific for the job you wanted to do. Yeah, and the thing about um, because we've been reading a lot of true crime and listening to true crime. Can I crime, ask you a question? Sure. Does it deal with bioremediation in a crime scene? Right. When you're done. No, you go. You go. No, when you're done. Okay. Um, but I know I just wanted to quickly say that at the end of the day, the whole cleanup process is to reduce the amount of, um, I suppose, negative and harmful effects of you know animal health and environmental. If there's something infectious in there, you want to get rid of it. Basically, and the interesting thing, once you go down this rabbit hole, um, there there's a lot of oil spill bioremediation companies, yeah. and a lot of them yeah. American based. Um, <clears throat> no offense to any Americans. I'm not saying yeah. it's you. I'm so, saying it's some of the corrupt companies that. And there's a use lot out you. of Dallas, Texas, Pasadena, you know Houston. You know why? Because they're all the city, the bays where yeah. the oil rigs. You have to go out of like Louisiana and shit. There's one in Australia. It's called the Grow Company. Oh fuck no! So um, they're a supplier of oil spill bioremediation. Um, so I'm going to say the Australian one because a lot of the Americans listening to this will know all of these ones. Um, but yeah, so. Go for us Aussies. Um, either that or you just get a kangaroo and um, with a flamethrower and some maybe a snorkel. Apologies for my stupidity. But apart from like warships that have sunk and whatnot and like dumb people doing dumb shit on Australia Day, have there been any massive oil spills in Australia? Um. To the degree of like... Obviously we're talking about dredging, which is a separate thing. But um, is there anything sort of like... Uh, what's the one? The one that was out of Louisiana, the, the movie, uh, event. Not no, no fuck. It's not, it's not Event Horizon. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, oh, Deepwater Horizon. Is there anything that's yeah. equal to Australia? Like, has anything like that happened in Australia? Yeah, we've had. Um, 
Or maybe it's just before my time hence where I'm... We've had like offshore oil wells leaking. Um, really? There was a massive spill in 2016. I, ignore me, I'm a fucking idiot. Um, it was something like a ten and a half thousand litre spill or something. 2009, cargo ship Pacific Adventure leaked more than 27 tonnes of oil fuel in the Gold Coast. Fuck. Yeah, so... Now, obviously, oil spills aren't exactly what you want because when it hits birds, it That's gets it, on... It, it disrupts the, the oil. You can't and, clean anything because as soon as you're like, oh, I've scrubbed this rock, the water's going to come back, wash up. Yep. Yeah. So... Woo! Yeah, not good. Um, so, I have one question. You yes. mentioned true crime. You know we love true crime, but I'm not saying I want to start with Chris Watts' story, but can we, like, work up to it? Sure. Can we start with easier stuff, like, where people have gone missing, but it wasn't so nefarious, and then they've been found, and then make it, like, a slow build to tougher shit? Yeah. And talking about tough shit, just before we do, I didn't mention the name of the bacteria, but... What was it? It was... Oh, well, some of them are Alcanivorax... Oh. Or Methylacellus sylvestris. Meth? Does that mean you use methane? Well, unless it's breaking down methyl groups. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I guess so. Cool. There you go. Um, I have an update on uh, the Chilean plane. Um, updated two hours ago, so when we started recording this, pretty much. Uh, so they lost contact about four hours after the plane took off. And basically... The Air Force where the plane left from, they told media that the plane... So the Chilean Air Force, they told media that the plane did not activate any distress signal. Uh, the pilot of the plane has extensive experience. Maybe he was forced to touch down on water. Um, they're estimated to have been about 450 miles, which is 725 um out, if that makes sense. And where they're travelling, there's literally nowhere to go. It's just open water. Great. Um, so they were pretty much 450 miles out of their 770 mile journey. So a little over halfway, I think. Yeah, a little yeah. over halfway. Yeah, it's a little over halfway. Um, they're somewhere in the Drake Passage, if that means anything to anyone. Um, they've published tons of maps on the internet, specifically Twitter. This passage is a body of water, water connecting the South Atlantic and South Pacific Oceans. Treacherous weather conditions are always reported. Uh, the Air Force says that the local weather was decent. At the time the crash, oh, sorry, at the time the plane disappeared. So if it crashed, um, fingers crossed, there, yeah. you know, they're all right. Uh, apparently, they would have had enough fuel to keep them going until 0:40. Uh, so what is that like, two three hours after they're expected to arrive? So hopefully they're just taking a detour. Um, upon on board, they have three Chilean soldier passengers, two are civil, two civilians employed by engineering and construction firm in Prosa, and they were going to carry out work on the military base. One is a student from Magellan's University, and other 15 passengers are members of the Air Force, as well as obviously 17 crew members that we talked about earlier. Air Force is contacting every. This is the Chilean Air Force. They're contacting everyone, the families of everyone, and I'm assuming they would have done that by now. Um, Air Force General Francisco Torres said that the search for the plane has begun began immediately um, after it was failed to arrive pretty much at the base in Antarctica. I don't know which base. I wasn't able to find that anywhere. So eight planes, four ships taking part in the search operation. An initial overflight of the area where communication was lost failed to yield any sign of a missing plane. Uh, rescuers are currently searching within the 60 mile radius of the last point of contact. The president of Chile, uh, Sebastián Pinera, says that he tweeted and said that he's dismayed by the loss. He has travelled to the Air Force base where they pretty much embarked um, to monitor the, sh uh, the search, um, as well as with the defence minister, uh, Alberto Espina. Uh, apparently, Chile, which I did not know, controls over 1.2 million square k's, which is 463,000 square miles of Antarctic territory. Um, and borders land claimed by UK and Argentina. So they operate within this territory. They have nine bases. Um, and that's the most of any country in the world. Jeez. So good luck. Like, with any hope, they're just on some bloody random glacier. Yeah. With food on board and bloody warm clothes. Hopefully the penguins are looking after them. Oh, he's open. You know, oh, I'm not talking shit. Like, this is absolutely terrible. Imagine that. 
absolutely terrible. So yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much all I have for you today. Well, that was me, apart from uh, the funny um, jellyfish. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Butter butter jelly jelly time. So, um, but yeah, you know, plankton also, you know, is very cool. Yeah, 100%. But, um, yeah. But we, we sort of need to watch a lot more um, documentaries on the deep sea. Deep, 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 sea. deep, deep sea. Deep sea. Deep sea. So, um, Has anyone released footage of what it looks like in the Mariana Trench? Uh, I think they did one where they dropped a robot right at the bottom. And the thing was, they tested the soil and tested the water and found uh, microplastics. Bags. Yeah, microplastics. So, congratulations, humans. We have officially contaminated everything. Yeah. Humans suck. Yeah. But on the bright side, there's also Apocalypse Cow. So yeah, I all I all recommend or recommend I can't even English go look go look up a book called Apocalypse Cow. And if you wish to go further deep further deep into bioluminescence, Google it, have a look, because there's some really, really cool photos on the net of mm. bioluminescence. Yeah. I'm good you probably left it there. Yep, um, well done. Thank you everyone for listening. Uh, before I forget, also good luck to any year twelveies in Australia. Um, Victoria. Hey, Ta. Yeah, VCE. Yeah. yeah. Um, from 7 a.m., isn't it? You guys are going to be able to get your marks. So remember, the number does not define you. You can take any track, back door, whatever, to get where you want to be in life. It might take you a little bit longer, but if it's what you want, you'll get where you need to go. Good luck to everyone. I hope you all exceed your expectations and, you know, you do a lot better than what your parents think you would have done. Absolutely. That was a shit time in life. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh until then. Au revoir. Au revoir. May the force be with you. And next week we be talking about uh Temple of Artemis. Woohoo! So yeah. And uh yeah. I'm about to upload a speed build. Well you have to edit the speed build. Well, I have to edit the speed build. But it will be hopefully up by the time this it's Tuesday now. Yeah. The podcast goes up at four PM on Sunday. Yeah. And uh just so you know, it's it's not to be taken seriously, this one. No, it's just for shits and gigs. This one's for shits and gigs. It's basically to tell your people that you're alive. <laughs> yeah, it's like, tell the people that I'm here. Um, I've bought you a couple of sets of Lego. We've got one up there behind you. Woohoo! And, um, we have a little bit more money coming in this week. So, yeah. So, I'm going to hit up the shops. Yeah. And tell me what kits you want. Yeah. And Because um, the big ticket items are going to go on sale in a couple of weeks. Yeah. But just to get you across the line, to have yeah. some stuff to do. And there are some big ones that are coming, but they're like down. Well, them, them ones we've got to save for. Because they are huge. I want to get the Voltron one for you. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right, everyone. Oh. That's us. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you have the time and you enjoyed us enough, I hate being the person to ask, but please share us with a friend. Yeah. Even though we're stupid. Um, maybe consider giving us a review. Yeah. Or a um, star rating, whatever it is, wherever you are. Um, uh, and yeah. say hello. We love to talk to people. Yeah, someone say hello. We have have we actually had anyone say hello yet? We did a year ago. A year ago, yeah. So if you're still there, say hello again. Yeah. Touch base. Um, I haven't been doing it, but remember how we used to ask for questions? Yes. Um, if I haven't posted one, just DM me. Like my messages are open, or email me, or whatever you want, or post a comment. Ask us a question, or if you want a specific topic, like I said. Um, if you want a, a question that you want us to ask, we haven't done it in a while. Oh, <laughs> but, yeah. There was the uh, Bitcoin one, and suddenly we started getting emails about you oh know invading Lord. Guam. Oh my God, Jesus Christ! Look, I am not disrespecting Bitcoin, yeah. right? I think Bitcoin is a great, one of the best things, especially in terms of human trafficking and people being exchanged for fucking Bitcoin. And back when I said it in the podcast, people were saying that you're an idiot, you don't know how Bitcoin works. Um, no, you don't know how Bitcoin works. It's actually not anonymous. Yeah. Every time you exchange a Bitcoin, your tag... Blockchain. ...is the new block, right? Yeah. So even if it's 10,000 blocks, they can subtract all those other blocks and narrow it down. Uh, the military made it. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. they, they're, they're the people... And people are being tracked, and rightly fucking so. How dare people be traded for bloody... That's ...electronic bits of fucking yeah. fake denomination money. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm not disrespecting Bitcoin. Yeah. Dude, if I had 10 million bits of coins... 
I would be a very happy camper. Yes. Very happy camper. Yeah. But until then, we're going back to the controllers and couches uh, because we are Full Metal and Chicken couches. and Step for far. at Controllers and Couches. And yes, this is a controller and a couch. Yes. We said controllers and couches because you use controllers for everything. And yeah, pretty much. We're predominantly couch potatoes on our days off. Yeah. Uh, we play video games on our couches. We read on our couches. We yeah. watch movies. We talk about shit. Um, I occasionally sleep on the couch. I listen to a lot of podcasts on our couch. So. Yeah. You know what? Stuff it. Stuff it. Do it. So, uh, uh, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you Have for a listening. fantastic week. You too. Thank you. <laughs> and everyone else at home or at yes. work or whatever it is, wherever you are. Yes. You listen, wherever you listen to us. Um, like I said, Temple of Artemis next week. Uh, we'll probably... Can we record that? During the one year morning's off. Yeah, done. Um, so that way it's ready. Yep. And pre-record a little bit because when you go back to work, because we're getting close to Christmas and you get real busy. Yeah, when we it get comes crazy close to Christmas. So. Yeah, cool That's beans. It. Done. Fantastic. Bye. Bye. See you later. Au revoir. May the force be with you. And yes, we have cookies. Come to the dark side. Done. <laughs> 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 <laughs>